I, uh, I found it in a parking lot. Uh, they were building a strip mall out west in the valley here, and uh, I saw it for sale, went and inquired about it, and uh, the guy uh, wanted $500 for it, so I let him sit on it for about a week, came back now, offered him $250 for it, and he said, I'll take $300 this year. I drove it off. Condition was, wasn't great. It, uh, it, it, the, the, the thing about it that I like the most, it had zero rust. But it did have trans issues and it had uh, engine issues, had a rod out of it. And they had been trying to fix it unsuccessfully. So uh, I, I brought a battery down, threw a battery in it, started it up knocking and drove it about a half mile to my house knocking. And where we tore it apart. Well, basically we stripped it down. Uh, I had problems, you know, I've had the truck since 1989. So one of the issues that I had, it was pre-internet. So it was just in, you know, the, the, the guys at Nissan told me, you know, you can't get parts for them, just don't even try to restore it. And I, I wasn't going to let that stop me because I like the truck. So I went ahead and searched things out. Now I had to do some, uh, some wheeling and dealing and digging. But the engine, I got another engine. And unfortunately, it had uh, bent rods. So then I found out about the JDM engines out of Japan and I was able to get a JDM engine, uh, very reasonable. And that was in uh, 1989, it's still running great to this day. It's a J15. Uh, they came with what's called an E1, which basically what it is, it's a, it's a clone of the MGB engine because these are the, the, the British co copies, uh, the British design and influence in these little trucks. Uh, this was actually the last model for that British design. Uh, they made this a truck up until April of 65. Well, originally it was 60 horsepower. They were proud of that as the emblem on the side of the fender uh, depicts. But uh, this engine here is about, I think it's 77 horsepower. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a Nissan transmission that I understand it's, it's some type of an MG copy. Uh, I don't know exactly what model, but it is a, it's a four-speed and it also uh, it has a column shift. Suspension is all stock. As a matter of fact, it has the original KYB shocks that came out from the factory. And uh, I took the shocks off and, and painted them. They don't leak, they dampen, uh, and uh, you know, uh, refreshed all the rubbers on them and stuff and put them back on. And, and it has a torsion bar front suspension, leaf spring rear. Uh, these trucks were, they had two ratings. This truck is actually a half ton. Uh, they had a one ton also in the same model. They looked almost identical, it was gearing and, 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 and spring rate and so on. Brakes are drum all the way around, uh, non-adjustable, uh, or excuse me, non-self-adjusting. You have to adjust them. Um, the wheels, they had hubcaps on them originally uh, with 14-inch wheels, uh, bias ply tires. Uh, I put the later model wheels from Nissan hard body pickup on it, so 15s. I was trying to raise the, increase the, the circumference of the tire size, the diameter of the tire, uh, to try to get the gear uh, ratio up. Well, the hardest part of restoring it was probably trying to find the, the small incidental parts that I needed. Uh, I was shocked. Um, at the time, I worked at uh, Finley Oldsmobile, the old Finley Oldsmobile on Boulder Highway, and I needed a windshield weather strip. And I asked the uh, body shop manager if they made a universal one I could glue together. And he said, now you try Nissan. And now we, it was hard for us to get parts for five-year-old Subarus at the time. And I, I, I figured, you know, it, was, uh, it wouldn't, wasn't going to uh, work. So uh, about an hour later, he comes here and he says, your weather strip will be here in two days. And with that, I shot over to Nissan, introduced myself to the parts manager, where he gave me his loose leaf parts manual. I took it back to the shop and I uh, disassembled it, I copied it, three hole punched it and made my own and I sat down and I went through it with a, with a uh, legal pad. I need, I need, I need. I wrote everything down that I needed and I took it back over there and they, surprisingly enough, they got me quite a few parts I went for a 25 year old truck. At the time it was 25 years old when, when we restored it and uh, real critical parts that I needed that really gave me a boost. Oh, the fun factor now. I actually, I actually had people that I worked with, they, they 
they didn't like the fact that I restored this truck. They said, well, why don't you a Camaro? Why don't you a Mustang? I've been working in the car business most of my life. They, uh, and I said, you know what? It's something that I wanted to do. It's, it's, it's my truck, you know? And uh, so I, I got mixed reviews back then, you know? Um, but nowadays it's totally changed. It's, it's you know, I, I, everywhere I go, people follow me into a parking lot. They pull me over. You know, they walk up. I had one guy wait in Walmart at the security booth for the guy driving the Datsun truck to come out so he could talk to me. He saw my Datsun hat on. <laughs> so the fun factor is over the top. I just love driving this thing. Future plans are, people are starting to make reproduction parts. And as they do, they're making some of the labels, some of the, the de underhood decals. Uh, I'm, I'm, I just want to, to make sure that I've got all the right parts where they should be, and and anything that's missing, uh, you know, uh, you know, replace and just keep it the way it is. Uh, and uh, I don't drive it all that much. I don't drive it on the freeway because you can't get windshields for them anymore. So uh, and just keep it keep it uh, basically the way it is now. <laughs> hey, uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Cars and Coffee in Las Vegas. We got some uh, cool and very unique <laughs> automobiles. Has straight cut, low. You know, first gear is straight cut gears, so you have the the reverse sound, the, the growling sound. Well, the Ratson Club is uh, a bunch of great guys. They, uh, you know, uh, they like to uh, meet and and go on cruises and and uh, you know if somebody needs help, they're there to help. Um, and they're they're really a, a group, a super group of guys. You know, um, and these old. Uh, British style engines didn't have any balancers in them, so they're they're rough as a cob at idle. Tell me again about the radio. Well, the radio. Uh, you know, at first, I put a Alpine cassette in it. Boy, I got some heat over that, you know. And uh, so when uh, I went ahead and, and started doing an eBay search for a for a uh, a vintage style radio and I actually found that radio that that almost is period correct and I paid seven dollars for it on eBay <laughs> it is it is an AM FM stereo and and uh, I did kind of want a stereo radio and and uh, so it worked out pretty well I've had it for a number of years now so and uh, you know it's you know use it that much we don't drive the truck all that much but uh, as a matter of fact, I've got just a tick short of 39,000 miles since we restored it in 1989. So, uh -huh. roughly, uh... Oh. That's a... <laughs>